myself a lot. I tend to get really, really loud. Well, let's be honest. I tend to get really loud anyway. But, um, yeah, it, uh, without a monitor up here, I'm, I guess I could go up there, but it'll be all right. Um, can we give God one more praise in the house? Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, 
And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, I know that we live in a world where we have access to the internet, we have Google, we can look up everything. We have Hebrew, we have Greek, and we have science and all those things. And I love that because I love to study the in-depthness. And I know that if we look at Jonah, we could say, well, the pigmentation of his skin had been discolored from the uh, acid in the whale's stomach and that the, all the supernatural that went on while he was preaching and, and, and all those things that took place. But this morning, I just want to look at what the Bible says, just what we know from God's Word. We don't want to go beyond that today. We understand that that is actual and factual, but we want to go with what God's Word says today. The biblical facts are these. Jonah hated the calling to go to Nineveh. He absolutely hated the calling on his life. Now, if I look at myself today, some of the things God asked me to do, I don't want to do. And if you'll admit it, each and every one of you, there are things that God asks of you that you don't want to do. Sometimes, in fact, I kind of pretend I'm not hearing God. Anybody else ever do that? Uh, the old story was this right here. The man said, Lord, you blessed me with 50 extra dollars this week. What do you want me to do with it? And a man came up and said, I just need $50 to, to meet my bills this week. He says, oh, God, I'm going to pray for that man. I wonder what you want me to do with this. And over and over and over, God was speaking to him to do something. And reality is sometimes I almost think I go, la, 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 la. Lord, what do you need from me? La, 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 I'm listening. <laughs> Jonah hated the calling. The first half of the book tells us how much he hated it. He was determined not to do it. Now, any of you that have a calling to teach or preach, you've probably been where most of us have. I answered the call to preach in my late 20s. God called me in my early teens. But I wasn't going to do what God wanted me to do. I was going to do it my way, not his way. And that's exactly what Jonah did. He went the other way to get away from his call. And at one point, here's what Jonah basically said. I would rather die than follow what you want, God. Throw me in the water. Just throw me on the boat. This is all my fault. I would rather die than just do what you've asked me to do. Now think about that. Think about Jonah saying, literally, I would rather die, drown in an ocean, than to go do what God told me to do. That sounds like hating what God has called you to do. If we read it in order, and I can't prove this out, but in order, the very last verse of chapter 1 says, And Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. Chapter 2 starts by this. It says, and, God, and Jonah cried out to God. So if we just read it in chronological order, Jonah laid there three days in the belly of a fish before he even cried out to God. How crazy do you have to be to wait three days in something's gut to not answer the call of God? I'm thinking, I'll go, right? But let's be honest. That wasn't what Jonah did. So he cries out to God, and he finally does, and then I love the second chance that God gives him. Pretty nasty, three days in the belly of the well. He hated the people of Nineveh so bad that he would rather stay in the belly of a well or a belly of a big fish than he would to go tell them about God. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. They were the enemy of Israel, and he wanted God to destroy them. I'm going to touch here for just a minute, but not going to stay long. <coughs> Jonah didn't want God to deliver the Ninevites. He didn't want them delivered. I wonder how many times born-again children of God don't want what God wants from a situation we want what we want for the situation to the point that we would be willing to disobey God and hinder the work of God. 
And that's not us, I know, right? And I mean that, truly. I joke about that, but I mean that. But I have seen churches, I have been in churches, that made this statement. We don't want to grow because we will lose our status. We are perfectly content where we're at. If you reverse that, this is actually what they would be saying. Let the world go to hell, I want my position. Now you know who else said things like that? The Pharisees. They knew the word of God. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But if they turned over to him, the leadership role, they would lose their position. And I think about how many times, how many times has a pastor stayed too long or not stayed long enough because he did what he wanted rather than what God wanted? How many times would somebody not teach? Let's take that a step further. And I'm not going to ask you to raise hands, but think about this. How many times has God given you a word of prophecy? How many times has God given you a tongue or an interpretation? And we, for the fear of pride, whatever it might be, just absolute rebellion, if you will, we missed it. <coughs> he says, in the last day I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and that the gifts should be active in the church. How many times do we not see them and it's not because God hasn't placed a calling. It's because we are disobedient to the calling for fear of embarrassment, maybe, for pride, for whatever the reason is. Fear we're going to get it wrong. How many times do I hinder the work of God by continuing to talk when he says shut up or not talking when he says speak? How many times do I hinder the work of God. Now, it's easy to look at Jonah and say he doesn't want them. He hates them. They're his mortal enemy. And, and I'm the guy that, I, I'm on the board of Shem. And I'm probably the worst person there could ever be to be on the board of Shem. And I mean that, Miss Kristen, because my heart doesn't leap for those that don't want better. When I see people that refuse to try to get better, my heart doesn't leap with joy to help them. I struggle with helping those that don't want to help themselves. I struggle with that. Call me a horrible pastor, but I struggle with that. But when God said for me to be on that board and I prayed about it and I sought on it and I realized that I need to be there and I need to be committed even to those that won't help themselves, my job is not to look at their what they do, their response. My job is to honor God with my time. My job is to be obedient. Jonah didn't want the ministry to work. So let's look at Jonah's message very quickly. I'm going to put it in today's words. You ready? 40 days you gone. 40 days you gone. 40 days you gone. Now it says the city was a three day walk through it. And this is the only words the Bible gives us that he preaches. Forty days and God's going to crush you. Forty days and you're gone. Forty days. It doesn't say he gives a call of repentance. It doesn't say he gives a plan of salvation. And to be honest with you, he didn't use an illustration. He didn't use a fancy thing. He didn't use... And imagine his enthusiasm. Turn in your Bibles to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the earth. Have a blessed day. Because he didn't want it to work. He wanted the Ninevites to be destroyed. If he could have got away with it, he'd have waited 39 days and 23 hours before he started. He didn't want it to work. To the point that when he preached and they started repenting, he went and pouted in the next chapter. Because God did reverse it. He never gave a slight suggestion of hope. No fancy illustration. No call to repentance. No mercy. 
40 days and you're gone. That's it. And the scripture says on down that the king said, maybe, just maybe. He didn't have any proof. He didn't have any word from the Lord that said it. He said, maybe, just maybe. God will think of this through another time if we just repent. If we just do what we know to do, maybe, just maybe, God will turn it around. And the scripture says God did. The message was from someone who didn't want to preach it. The message was basically <coughs> blah. And yet God turned an entire city around. I used to believe that God was going to use us if we were willing. I now believe from this story that God will use us if we're obedient, even if we're not willing. He didn't ask him to be willing. He just asked him to be obedient. What's the whole story of Jonah about? Winning the city of Nineveh. And I can't help but wonder Sign says just over 8,900 people. If we were just obedient. If we were just obedient. When he said, call somebody and pray, we did. When he says to prophesy, you just prophesy. When he says that your waitress is hurting and you need to stop her and pray with her. When he says to turn around and give that guy five dollars that you know he's not going to do anything good with it, but it's not about what he goes with it, but it's about the obedience of the body of Christ. What would happen if, if 80 people in this room today or however many is in here at this service, what would happen if I wasn't waiting to be willing and I was just obedient? God says, wait, and I go, okay, well, we'll do this while we're waiting. We'll get ready for that. And God didn't ask you to do that. Or God says, go, and I've got a reason for waiting, right? The last church that I was at, God has not asked me to do this here, and I thank God, but he had me preach on holiness for six straight weeks. We were in a moment where the church was exploding. I mean, people coming, 20 visitors a week showing up. And for six straight weeks, I preached on holiness. I came home and asked God to make, let me quit. I would cry all week and say, don't make me preach harshly on holiness. And I watched as numbers began to drop. And people said, I didn't come to get beat up. And I sat in my car one day and said, God, why? And he said, because I don't want a church that's playing games. I want a church that's serious. Amen. Amen. And I said, well, then why didn't you tell me that up front? And he said, because you wouldn't have been broke in preaching. You would have preached with arrogance. And I said, God, just take me out. Don't make me go back next Sunday. I don't want to do this. He said, uh, here's what I want you to talk about next week. <laughs> what happens, whether we like it or not, if we're just obedient to God? What happens? If we truly just become obedient, I believe God wants to win the city of Sweden. But if everything in my life is about what God will do for me next, I'll never win them. And John Maxwell would say it like this, the big leadership guru. He says there's a law of the lid. Anybody ever heard of that? The law of the lid says those you're teaching will not go beyond where you are willing to go. So I would say this to you. 
I'm not willing to be obedient above and beyond. How can you ever go beyond that if, I, if you're learning from me? So I'm not preaching down to you to be obedient. I'm telling you that I need to step my game off. Because I fight God tooth and nail on some things. And I look at this story from the angle that he shows it to me this week. He says, if I ask you to lay hands on the sick, lay hands on the sick. If I ask you to speak in tongues, speak in tongues. If I ask you to interpret, interpret. If I ask you to win a city, then win a city. I said, God, we're not talented enough. He said, yeah, did you just see the message he preached? He said, I didn't ask you to be talented. I didn't even ask you to be gifted. I asked you to be Nothing more, nothing less. As the body of Christ at Harvest Christian Center, I want to encourage you to be obedient. When you can't see the next step and God says take the step, just stick your foot out. I met with two men yesterday from Guatemala, and God is telling me what I'm supposed to give for the next mission trip. And I'm like, God, where's it going to come from? He said, I didn't ask you. I said, all I asked was for you to be obedient. He said, I'll never ask you to go to Guatemala, but I'm asking you to send men to Guatemala. And I begin to meditate on this scripture this week. And I know that y'all think sometimes I'm, I'm harsh and I'm mean and I understand that. I think that myself sometimes. <coughs> Some days I wish God would just put me working at a car wash talking to people one on one. <coughs> but if we are truly in the last days, we got a city that is dying.
pray that we sit at home when we lay hands on the sick. Or when we use the gift of the Spirit that you give us. Minister to us today through your word. Let us learn to be obedient in everything. In your precious name. Stand with me.